Hello, wonderful world. Welcome to the Future Successors podcast, where the future is now. Hey, I'm Jared Sunter. Today, I'm joined by Senior Manager, Proactive Security of Amazon Web Services, Mr. Wesley Snell Jr. How are you doing today, sir? Oh, man, doing well. Uh, thanks for having me. Glad to be here. Too, man? Listen, work. Yes, sir. <laughs> work yes, has sir. been busy, but glad to be here. Thank Always. you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Now, you're on the board of the Future Successors Nonprofit Organization. Yeah. How's that experience being on the board and different things like that with Miss Nikki? Listen, it's it's always a, a pleasure to kind of support and give back to the community. Uh, but in particular, I've been knowing Nikki, shh, man, over, almost Augusta 30 days. years from Augusta, Georgia. Yeah. Uh, we both went to Westside High School together uh, in Augusta. So, you know, she's been doing great things uh, for years now. Um, and so, you know, I've contributed over the past uh, few years giving donations and then she reached out about a about a year or so ago and asked me if I was um uh able to uh to support on the on the board from an advisory standpoint and I said sure you know I want to make sure I give back and uh give back to the youth and and spend my time in in, in places where it's impactful so I I've, I've enjoyed it meeting people like you and some yes. of the other um you know it's it's a it's just a great great initiative yeah, so just explain to me like the title of your job with the Amazon Web Services, Senior Manager of Proactive Security. Just tell us what that is, because I know a lot of people might not know what that is. Sure. Just, just give us a little intel on what you do. Well, I'll take a step back a little bit first. Okay. Um, so I'm a cybersecurity executive. Yes. I've been in the field for 20 years, 20 plus years. Um, a graduate of Southern Polytech State University here in yes, Atlanta, sir. which is now um, Kennesaw State University, they yeah. merged a few years ago. I don't know, I still feel some kind of way about that. <laughs> um, but um, so uh, ever since my freshman year in, in college, I always wanted to kind of focus in uh, computer engineering and yes. cybersecurity. <clears throat> cybersecurity has always been a passion of mine. Uh, and so I got an internship my sophomore year in college, um, was able to kind of work in the space starting then. And I've been in the field ever since then. Uh, and so my expertise, areas of expertise that I have in cybersecurity, network engineering, system architecture design, penetration testing. And so at AWS, I run a, a global pen testing team. Uh, so essentially that means every new technology that AWS, Amazon Web Services develops, uh, my organization tests that from a security perspective. Yes. So I have hundreds of essentially hackers that work for me <laughs> globally. Yes. And we beat on things, technology, um, try to get it to do something that it wasn't in designed to do, that it wasn't intended to do. And then we provide recommendations back to the developers, the software developers to say, hey, this is how you improve that piece of technology. Um, because if we can break it, if we can hack it, if we can, can get that to do something that it wasn't intended to do, an adversary can do the same thing as well. Yes. And so I've been at AWS now for two years um, prior to uh, that serving in other leadership roles in the federal government and other Fortune 500 companies. Um, so, yeah, AWS, fast paced environment. Uh, love working there. The, the, the reason why is because I'm working with some of the top uh, engineering uh, minds in the world. Um, you know, it is a big tech company, one of the four big tech companies in the world. And so just the, the the amount of talent that you're surrounded by every day, it's just extraordinary. Yes, you took a couple of steps back. Let's take a few sure. more steps back. Sure. So you're originally from Augusta and you went to Westside High School. Mm -hmm. How was that experience living in Augusta? Because I know golf is really big in Augusta yeah. and everything. So what did you do in high school, the experiences that you had at Westside? Yeah. And how was it there? Listen, Augusta, uh, you know, the second largest city in, in Georgia, uh, aside from Atlanta, um, as I mentioned before, Nick and I went to Westside High School together. Um, kind of a, a nice, diverse school uh, at that point when we were there. Uh, I played football, uh, baseball, and track. Uh, then I did also did basketball one yes. year. But I played football primarily um, and also went to, to college. Uh, my first year, went to junior college and played uh, ball. Okay. Um, but once I kind of laid the foundation in terms of my interest for technology, um, there was a lot of different classes that we had uh, that I can recall uh, at Westside, uh, kind of when in the early days of the internet, kind of getting familiar with that, understanding what that was. We thought it was very intriguing. 
Uh, there were some some other tech related classes where we were able to build our own computer systems, towers. Yes. Um, a lot of you guys may not be familiar with that now because a lot of the computers are, are very small and laptops. But yes. we do a lot of coding. Yeah, so it was a lot of lot of massive towers, right? Uh, yes. Back then, but uh, yeah, growing up in Augusta it was great. I uh, got a chance to uh, work at Augusta National, I think, three times uh, as, from a uh, an internship standpoint, if you will, doing our spring break. So I'm an avid golfer as well. Love, <laughs> love, uh, yeah. uh, love to, to to play golf. Um, you know, I grew up doing the Tiger Woods area era, era yes. when he when he won Augusta in '97, '96 for the first time. And uh, I was there. I was working uh, that year as well. So, you know, Augusta has some fun memories of, of Augusta, not only just, uh, you know, from school days, but also, you know, uh, you know, going to events like the Masters and, and so forth. Yes. Uh, with the success that you have and the different places that you have been, how do you define success? Oh, man, that's a good question. Um, you know, I don't think success is a uh, a place that you just get to. I don't think okay. it is a... Um, a peak or summit of a mountain that you reach and then voila, you're there. Yeah. I think success is a continual progression throughout life, right? Because depending on your age, depending on where you are at a point in your in time in your life, you're going to define it differently. Uh, as a young student, someone who's looking to go to college and things of that nature, graduating, that's success, right? Yes. Um, but then now after you graduate, what's next? You want to get a, 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 a job, you want to have a, a career, a profession in the field of study that you have, you know, worked so hard over in the, in the last, you know, four or five years in college. And so that's success, achieving success. Then when you get married, you're having kids and yes. have family, things of that nature, success then kind of looks different, right? You, you want to have a stable environment uh, for you, your spouse, your family. You want to have a stable career at that point in time where you want to be purchasing a home and things of that nature where you have an environment where you can uh, raise a family in. So, so kind of success has changed depending on what phase of life that I've, that I've been in. But I've always been kind of targeted. Or I've always been driven rather by a, a set of principles. Yes. I've always had a goal in mind that I wanted to achieve. Uh, and then I develop a plan to get there. I don't care what it, whatever your goal is, whatever you want to kind of accomplish in life, you need a plan, right? And so success is not necessarily accomplishing everything that's in that plan, but you are moving in that direction, right? Um, it's hard to go somewhere. You get in a car, you don't know where you're going. Yes. You always want to kind of have some indication of where you want to go. So developing a plan, that's my my my. Uh, definition of success because even if you miss one or two you know pieces of that plan you had a plan you had a framework in which yeah. you were being guided by right so I, I would um, caution anyone to look at success just as something monetarily right I want to be able to you know become a millionaire I want to hit this dollar amount right that I that I have then what right so if that's the only thing that you uh, the only way that you define success is going to be kind of empty once you achieve that. Um, I think if you have passion, if you love um, things that you have dedicated your life toward, other things, riches and all that stuff is going to mm -hmm. um, come as a result of that. Yeah, so everybody wants to be successful. Mm -hmm. And the base of success would, would maybe be hard work. That's just the base. That's what you start off with. Hey, you want to work hard with everything that you do, mm -hmm. everything you put your hands on and everything that you're into. You want to work hard at it. But what's that extra sauce that you had that put you past mm. everyone else? Well, listen, I was raised by a single mother. Yes. Um, in Augusta. She worked multiple jobs to make ends meet. Yes. Um, so my number one motivating factor was wanting to make my mother proud. Yes. Because she uh, she sacrificed a lot for me and my siblings. And also she raised some of her siblings as well. Uh, so that was number one motivating factor for me. Also at an early age, I was uh, diagnosed with ADHD. Okay. Um, and so there were a number of administrators in my uh, school days that, you know, some who just, yeah, you're not going to be able to do X, Y, and Z because, because of, of that. This. Yeah. Right. You simply want to prove them wrong. Right. Uh, so those were motivating factors. 
Uh, and then I also had this idealistic um, uh, life that I wanted to live. White picket fence, family, et cetera, <laughs> yes. you know, nice career, travel the world, things of that nature. So anything that I could do to kind of ensure that I could accomplish those things, uh, I was going to be determined to do that. And anything that didn't directly uh, relate to that or help me accomplish, achieve those goals, I just kind of discarded it and moved forward in life. I don't individuals, relationships, etc. If you're not helping me progress, I don't have any, any use for you. Uh, so those were some motivating factors for me, um, you know, from my early, early years. So the success realm is, is quite large, but most people, when you see those, uh, these people of this status of, hey, I'm successful, you don't see those moments where you have those down moments. Mm. How do you handle those ups and downs? And can you tell me a moment where you were resilient and you kept pushing through the, to, to get the, the goal of this is where I want to be and this is what I want to do? It's a good question. Um, number one, I, I'll tell you this. Hearing the word no yeah. is just another word in the, in the vocabulary. You will hear, hear the word no as an adult. You're going to hear it as a young adult. Um, but it doesn't mean that that's the end result. Yes. Um, so when you have an understanding that that's a part of life, you don't let that deter you, right? I think our parents, you know, they, they've used analogies, uh, analogies such as, uh, you know, one door closes, another one opens, right? That, that, the older I get in life, I, that, that rings true. Um, I've been... Um, I've been told no by some of the biggest companies in the world. Yes. Going through interviewing process, uh, I thought that I was well prepared for whatever role it was that I was interviewing for. I thought I nailed it, the, the, the process and, and they selected someone else. Ah, yeah, the, the initial, hearing that initial response, yes. it hurts, <laughs> right? It's like, ah, you know, wh what did I do wrong? You start thinking, you know, in what way was I in, you know, inadequate, insufficient, etc. And then you come to the realization, you may not have been a problem at all. You, you may not just have been the right fit for that role or from a divine standpoint, that wasn't a role for you anyway, that God hadn't provisioned that particular role for you, that there's enough, another role for you somewhere else. Uh, and so I always keep those things in mind, right? Um, I realized early on in life uh, that God had his hand on me. Um, so hearing no, uh, isn't going to change that, right? I, I understood that I was blessed. Um, God was, was an active presence in my life. It still is. So I don't get easily deterred by that because I have a strong enough faith. Right. And then also I have confidence in the preparation that I've done throughout the years, schooling and, and, and reading, studying, uh, independently, I have confidence in who I am and what I what I bring to the table and the knowledge that I have. And so, you know, your gift will make room for you. It doesn't mean that your gift is going to make room for you in every room that you walk in. Yes. But there is a room for you that your gift will make room for you. And then you, you, you will uh, take advantage of that. In the business world, <clears throat> a, a no can turn into a yes. Oh, yeah. And more so it could be about, hey, I'm qualified. That's what you know. What about who you know in the networking piece? Sure. How important is that in business? Well, listen, I think, I think networking is probably the most fundamental principle that you need to learn as a young adult. Yes. Because that is what's going to carry you through your career. I think my last four or five opportunities, whether that be in the government or in corporate America have come through relationships because I built a relationship through someone over the last 20 years and an opportunity came uh, available and some, someone said, hey, have you thought about Wes? So let me call Wes. I think he would be key for that particular role. And that's because I've either worked with someone in the past and they know my work ethic, they know the quality of work that I produce, uh, they know that I'm a champion for diversity. Um, and so that's very important in developing relationships. You should never enter a relationship thinking also, how is this going to benefit me? 
you should also be thinking, how can I contribute to this other person as well? It may not be today. It may not be tomorrow. It may not be two years from now. It may be five years from now where, you know, you may be reintroduced to that person that you met a few years ago and they say, hey, there's an opportunity that I can either help you with or vice versa. So networking is essential to developing yourself as a professional, um, both socially, how you, you learn how to move, you know how to talk uh, in certain functions in certain rooms around certain people, right? That's helpful there. And then professionally, um, of course, opportunity, career opportunities can come as a result of uh, your, your professional network. Yeah, so I know family is big to you. Yeah. Uh, you didn't grow up with the father, but you did grow up with your mother. Mm -hmm. And she did everything she could to, to, to provide for you and, gave you and give you the things that you need. And so I know that you have a wife and kids mm -hmm. and you have your own family. So how important is that family piece to you? Uh, it's very important. So, you know, my father is still around, still living. Yeah. Um, but my mother and my father never married. Uh, so my mother raised me um, again as a single parent. Um, but I did spend some time with my father, not as much as I would have liked. Yes. You know, he was he, he did what he knew best based on, um, you know, his own upbringing. Um, but I wanted a little bit more hands on yes. uh, type of uh, situation with my kids and, and my own family. Right. I wanted to be active. I wanted to be present. My wife and I have been together since I was 16 years old, since we've been in high wow. school. Um, we are now in our 40s. Right. So she uh, is primarily responsible, along with my mother and, and who I have become today. It's because of her support, her encouragement, etc. And so when we started having kids, um, you know, I know I knew that, you know, it was some she was like minded. We had the same end goal. We had the same ethic. We had the same morals. Right. And so when we start having kids, it's like, yeah, we want to uh, create an environment where, number one, stable environment. We're encouraging them. Uh, we're showing them the, the importance of academics right, in, in life. Um, but allowing them to to kind of find find their way, right? We we want to we want to be a guide for them, and that's kind of how we we were raising our kids. Um, but we were very much active in um, their academic life, right? We were we we're at schools. We, they have private tutors and things of that nature. Those are things that I didn't necessarily have um, as a child myself because either my mother was working, you know, two jobs to kind of make ends meet, and she wanted to make sure that. You know, she was providing, doing what she needed to do, uh, or and my dad was not necessarily active, you know, day to day. So, um, you know, I, I was, you know, there kind of raising myself in some aspects as well. You know, I wanted to have a different environment, a different setup for my family. Yes. So that's that's one piece of family. Now we're going to talk about the brotherhood and, and what you joined, the alphas. Mm -hmm. Talk about that relationship sure. and the alphas and what they did for you. So uh, I joined Alpha Phi Alpha uh, Fraternity Incorporated in the spring of 2004. Yes. Um, what drew me to the fraternity, what drew me to that brotherhood was, number one, I have siblings, but I'm the youngest of all of my siblings on both my father and my mother's side. Uh, and there's a wide age gap. So uh, I, in some respect, I kind of grew up as a only child as well. And so I wanted to be a part of a brotherhood uh, have that bond um, with some other siblings, if you will. But also, uh, you, you know, alphas are, you know, well known for being distinguished, yes. being about their business, uh, being business focused, being professional focused. Uh, we also think about folks like uh, Martin Luther King Jr. and some other notable alphas who I always admired, right, from a studying perspective and and I said, I want to I want to align myself with a group of men uh, who are doing those types of things. And so that's what drew me to to Alpha Phi Alpha. Yes. Yeah, so we got two brotherhoods. We got the Alphas and you went to Morehouse and got your Masters of Religion. Yep. Correct. And so talk about that brotherhood at Morehouse. And I'm going to Morehouse in, in August and I'm going to be a new brother. And the experience that you had at Morehouse, give me some tips and, 
and different things you would tell incoming freshmen at Morehouse mm. and different things like that? Yeah, so I have a unique experience. So I went to Morehouse School of Religion for grad school. I have a master's in divinity. Um, so I'm an ordained minister as well. Um, listen, Morehouse is like uh, no other institution on the face of this earth. You have a collection of young black men predominantly um, who are there for one goal, to get an education. Um, but it is probably one of the most historically rich institutions uh, that you would ever step foot on. I mean, you, we can go for days when you think about some of the powerhouse, notable names who have been at Morehouse, who have become titans in our cultural uh, history and, and politics and civil rights and entertainment. Um, there's a lot to learn there, right? And I think, you know, Morehouse is a place where uh, you're going to come into your own and, and understand what, is, what does it mean not only to be a man, but a, a black man in America. Uh, it is an institution that is going to prepare you for the challenges that you will undoubtedly face as an, a, a young black man in America and then a young black man in corporate America as well. It's going to prepare you uh, to kind of handle and withstand and then exceed um, those challenges, right, uh, and, and opportunities. So um, I'm excited for you to go. I mean, once you uh, step foot on the campus and you go to um, the King's Chapel and, and, and you have a, your, your first, uh, um, you know, service there and things, you, you, you will feel it. You, you're going to feel the presence of not only the other um, students that are there with you, but those who came before you as well. Yeah, so what's next? What's next for Wesley mm. and family, whether that's dream vacation? What's the dream? What, 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 what is your end goal? What do you want to be at? Well, so listen, um, you know, I, I travel a lot, not only for work, yes. but, but uh, personally as well, my family and I. So we, we love to see the world, um, you know, love to get our kids out as well to kind of see the world, help them understand that there is something much more greater and beyond just the sphere that they live in day to day. Yeah. Uh, but what's, you know, for, you know, looking four or five, 10 years from now, I'm very focused financially, making sure that my family and I um, have, we're independently wealthy to a point where, you know, when we're 50 years old, my wife and I, where we can just retire when we want to. Like, so yeah. we're, we're very uh, focused on that. that. That's a goal on ours, right? We want to be able to to kind of really enjoy the fruits of our labor, you know, in the next 10 years where we work only if we want to work, not because we have to work, right? Yes. Um, looking forward to kind of send the kids off to college, right? Yep. Making sure they have a stable um, uh, foundation so when they, we kick them out of the nest, they can, they're ready to fly. Yep. Um, you know, so professionally, you know, my wife and I both are, are achieving some great um, heights right now professionally. And so we're going to ride that wave until that wave kind of, you know, goes down. Um, but, you know, being financially, you know, we, my wife and I just finished setting up our estate and things of that nature and will planning and all that stuff for our kids. Uh, so that's, that's very much a part of our focus right now, kind of being maximizing our financial opportunities right now. So, you know, in the next five or 10 years, we can, we can really be sitting pretty. Yeah, that's our time. Thank you for contributing to another successful podcast. Thank you for coming, Mr. Wesley Snow Jr. Thank you, man. Man, thanks so for having thank me. Thank you. Thanks. For uh, that's, a, uh, that's our time. See you on the next episode. Peace.